One, two, three. What the fuck, dude? Halfway, all the way. I challenge you to a beer drinking contest. Mark your calendars. You're not gonna May beat him. <laughs> May fifth. May fifteenth. May fifteenth. You're all suckers. May fifteenth. Mark your calendars. Meetup game in L.A. Chokers, you ain't gonna come. What's up, fishes? Welcome back to the channel. We're back at it in Las Vegas, Nevada, specifically the Orleans. The Orleans, the or I don't know how to pronounce that word. Sorry, I'm Mexican. I just don't know these big old fancy words, but that's not freaking important. What is important is that we're going to play our very first tournament in over a freaking year since the pandemic started, basically. And I'm really excited for this specific one because it's a $100 buy-in. 25,000 starting stack, 20 minute blinds. Best part of it all, it's a $10,000 guaranteed. So hit that like button to get me some luck. Subscribe, get that notification bell. You guys know all that, dude. And I'll see you guys on the inside. Yo, Greg, you wanna put in a side bet? Twenty dollars to see who who lasts longer. I'm down. You want to pay me now, or you want to? No, you can go ahead. <laughs> Twelve seconds later. We are out. We managed to land 122nd place, which is not too bad because the total amount of entries was 122. Yeah, man, I am a freaking fish. I only got to play like five or six hands, and I lost them all. I started with pocket nines, very first hand. I lost it. I lost my big chunk of stack with pocket sixes, which, to make a long story short, I lost the quads. And with only like 6,000 left behind, I get pocket sixes again as if I didn't learn my freaking lesson. And I go all in. Of course lose they don't freaking hold and we are freaking out but it's all right we're gonna go on and jump into a cash game hopefully we could run it up and hopefully we get to win some money so stay tuned all right fishers so after we get busted out of the stupid tournament we put our name at the one three table and it takes about an hour for us to get seated once we do we go on and buy in for a hundred big blinds and of course we're freaking card dead it's been about three full rotations that we've been card dead. And when you've been card dead for this long, man, even this ace 10 starts looking a little juicy. The only problem is that our opponent in seat eight, that dude has been running hotter than the freaking sun. He has about 2K behind. He's been raising every pot. He's been three betting. He's been playing stupid aggressive. So when I look down at ace king, everybody's already been folded to him. He makes it 10 bucks. I'm not going to just call these 10 bucks. I go on and I repop him to 45 bucks. A big blind opponent, he goes on and he folds. And our aggressive opponent, he's thinking. And I know he's thinking about four betting me. But he knows I haven't played a hand in such a long time. He probably thinks I'm really strong now, which I am. And But either way, that doesn't stop him. He goes on and he makes the call. And we go heads up to see a flop. The flop is due 7-9. That doesn't hit or connect with us in any freaking way, but that doesn't stop us from firing a continuation bet of 40 bucks. Our opponent is thinking about it, but he ultimately decides on a lay down and we take our very first pot of the night. A big old pile of chips gets pushed in our direction. And we're feeling freaking great. Here I'm under the gun and I look down at ace queen suited. I've bumped it up to seven bucks. Everybody on the table has folded except our opponent on the button who decides to repop us to 17 more dollars. I put in my remainder 10 bucks and we go heads up to see a flop. The flop is deuce five queen. 
We hit top pair and we check it to our aggressor and she checks back. No more Mr. Nice Guy. So when another deuce hits on the turn, I go on and fire a bet of 20 bucks. She goes on and she calls the 20 bucks and we're heads up to see a river. The river's a nine, which shouldn't have changed anything. And I fire off another bet of $30. She quickly calls and we table our hand and we are good. We go on and rake up another nice, decent little pod. And at this point, my buddy's been eliminated from the tournament. We've been playing for about an hour and a half already. And I'm not about to let him wait for another hour for another seat to open up. So we rack up and we head up to another casino. After we cash out, we go on and take a small drive out to the palace station. Where we go on and buy him for 300 bucks at the one, two table. And a few hands in, I go on and put a straddle on the button. Everybody folds except our opponent on the small blind, who's our buddy Greg. And when it's my action, sweet baby Jesus, we look down at two juicy aces. I mean, how freaking great is that? I mean, pocket aces on the button with a straddle. Man, it doesn't get much better than this. I make it 30 bucks. Our fish on the small blind, he goes on and he makes the call. And before the flop comes out, he goes on and he checks in the dark. I immediately go on and put a $30 bet in the dark. And when the flop comes deuce for nine, it's action on him. He calls the 30 bucks and we go heads up to see a 10 on the turn. I still believe I have the best hand and Greg goes on and he checks. I go on and check back with the hopes that he thinks that I'm full of feces and he decides to fire a bullet on the river. I mean, after all, this route I took on this hand seems kind of sketchy. Unfortunately, though, Greg is a little smarter than that. And when the river brings in another four, he checks. I fire 35 bucks. He immediately folds. I show him my aces so he knows that I'm not a liar. And we pick up a nice, decent, healthy sized pot. Hell freaking yeah. Now we're on the small blind looking down at pocket fours, AKA the sailboats. It's folded off to the cutoff who makes it 10 bucks. The button calls and I'm not gonna fold. I'm gonna go on and see a flop with these fours. I go on and I make the call and we go three ways to a flop of eight, seven, deuce. I check the original aggressor who later on told me his name was T. Shout out to him, shout out to T. He goes on and he checks as well. Our opponent on the big blind takes a stab at it and puts out a bet of five bucks. Now I'm not happy with this, but you know what? I'm getting such a good price that I just I just can't find a fold. I make the call. T on the cutoff makes the call, and we are still three ways to a turn. The turn is another deuce. I check it. T in the cutoff decides to lead out for five bucks now, which the button calls. And you know, at this point, I'm pretty sure these guys don't have anything. I mean, they're betting and calling such small amounts in, in, in such a big, healthy sized pot. And, you know, I'm just not buying it. I know that if I raise it here, I'm going to have to lead out on the river. And you know what? I, I'm cool with it. Yeah, I make it 20 bucks. T gets out of the way. The button sticks around and he makes the call and we go heads up to a river. The river's a pretty safe card. It's a three. I go on and I fire off a bet of 30 bucks, which at the time seemed like a pretty good idea. But after reviewing the hand, kind of editing it for the vlog, I realized, you know, this was pretty unnecessary. I mean, I didn't have to bluff at it since, I mean, I did have showdown value and my opponent only had about 80 bucks left behind. And if he would have shoved, I was going to be in a pretty stupid spot. Fortunately, though, that didn't happen. He folds and we take another awesome pot. Hell freaking yeah. We're on the button again, and this time we look down at 6-7 offsuit. I've put a $5 straddle, which a few of the players have called, and once it's action on me, I just can't stop myself. I bump it up to 20 bucks. T calls on the cutoff, the button calls as well, and we go three ways to a flop of 6-7 deuce. What a beautiful yet vulnerable flop for us, and once both players check, I fire 40 bucks. T on the cutoff snap calls the button folds and we go heads up to a turn. The turn is an eight. Now this board is getting a little bit uglier every street. So once my opponent checks, I announce that I'm all in. My opponent has about $200 left behind. He quickly folds and we take another one. Hell freaking yeah. Now I'm on the cutoff looking down at seven, nine offsuit. 
Man, what is it about these suited one gappers that tickles my pickle, man? I just, I don't understand. I just can't stop myself. I go on and I make it six bucks. My buddy Greg, who's on the button, he calls. Some early position guy calls and we go three ways to a flop of six, eight, deuce. We flop an open-ended and after the early position player checks, I fire off a bet of 12 bucks. Greg on the button is my only customer and we go heads up to a turn. The turn is no help. It's a freaking three. I'm first to act and I fire off another bet of 22 bucks. Greg calls and we go heads up to a river. The river's a nine. We go on and we miss our straight, but we do get top pair. We're not gonna go on and take it easy on Greg. We go on and fire off one last bet of 20 bucks. He goes on and he folds and you know, I usually don't show my hands, but Greg's my friend. I go on and I show him the goods and my nine was good the whole way. My buddy was on a draw as well, and if he would have hit, he would have lost big because he would have had the dummy end of the straight and he would have just lost it all. Now we're in the cutoff and early position makes it eight bucks. He gets one color down the road and once it gets around to me, sweet baby Jesus, we get pocket aces again. Hell freaking yeah, we repop it to 30 bucks. We get two callers in early position and we go three ways to a flop. The flop is king, four, five. It checks to me, and with about 90 bucks in the pot, I make it 60. Both players go on and let it go, and we take this one down. All right, for this last hand of the night, I'm gonna go on and show you a clear example of what not to do at the poker table, which is playing your hand blind. Yeah, yeah, you heard me right, no luck. You know, and the only reason why I did this, I mean, other than I'm a freaking idiot, is because my buddy Greg went ahead and straddled on the button. And if there's a change of action, if somebody raises before it gets to the button, the button no longer holds that power. So I wanted to take that power away from him and I go on and I put 15 bucks out there blind and now it's action on Greg. He goes on and he calls the remainder 10. Two more players down the line call and we go four ways to a flop. The flop is seven, deuce nine. It checks to me and I go on and fire off a bet of 15 bucks, which Greg is the only one who calls and we go heads up to the turn. Turn is a 10. I chicken out, I check. Greg goes on and he checks as well and we go on and see a river. The river's a nine. I fire one last bet of 25 bucks in hopes that he folds, but he actually ends up doing the exact opposite. He goes all in. Oh, now I have to look. Is six high good? I don't think so. I go on and I muck. Uh, we go on and we lose this pot. And Greg goes on and shows us he had a nine. He hit trip nines. And well, we were actually losing and basically drawing dead the entire way. It's now time to rack up and head out. All right, fishes, that's all I got for you guys today. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Sorry I couldn't get any more footage of that damn tournament, but we went ahead and got busted so damn quick. We didn't even last long. I mean, not that we ever do. We went ahead and played three other sessions while we were out there. Two of those three sessions were played at the Bellagio. We went ahead and started our sessions at around two, three in the morning. That's when we heard that Brad Owen would usually be there, but that bastard didn't even show up. So we didn't get a chance to see him, say hi to him, take a picture with him. I mean, not that I wanted to. I mean, I'm no freaking, yeah, you know, it's my buddy wanted to. I didn't like whatever, you know, but anyways, it didn't work out. Uh, the other, the last session, we went ahead and played at the Caesars Palace, but I'm going to go on and leave that one for another video. Just uh, go on and subscribe, hit that thumbs up button, hit that notification bell. It really helps out the channel. Check out our Facebook page as well, Southwest Poker Vloggers. We're gonna go on and have a meetup game May 15. We've got a whole bunch of YouTubers in there. We got Happy Face Hold'em, we got Mr. Vegas, we got Jeff Stimson, we got Think Blue Poker, and that community is growing more and more every day. So go check it out, go on and click a like on that as well. I'll see you guys on the next one.